Hello and welcome to the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. We are now officially on episode number 72. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, my co-host Stephen Munson uh, is now currently and officially out on fraternity leave uh, being a new father. Um, so I'll be going solo, dolo for this episode and um, actually throughout um, his course of absence, absence around like the next six or seven weeks, um, maybe bringing in a co-host or two or a surprise guest or two to, you know, help me carry out these episodes. Too, so it's going to be very, very, very exciting there. Um, but yeah, uh, Stephen, good luck to you um, and your wife, Tessa. We are all rooting for you three. Um, best of luck, Stephen. So that's what's new with Stephen. Uh, as far as everything with me, volleyball is life, apparently. So just getting ready to start up our first official game uh, tomorrow um, at the time of this recording here, too, at the high school that I'm at. And then uh, uh, just getting rolling, getting ready for a uh, busy, busy, busy club season as well. Uh, so that's just the life and how it's been, too, on top of everything else uh, related to USA Volleyball specifically. Um, so enough about that. You know, we always talk about coaching here and there, too. Before we get into this episode, if you haven't already listened to our previous episode, episode 71, um, we sat down with executive director and president of the USA Volleyball Florida region, Steve Bishop. Steve shared about his background in volleyball, this upcoming motorcycle trip, and we also learned more about volleyball in the Florida region specifically. Then uh, they took a deep, deep dive into the history and success of the All-Star Championship which is also formerly known as the High Performance Championship as well. Um, listen now on all podcast platforms or watch the episode or other episodes as well on the USA Volleyball YouTube channel. Now, it feels weird introducing myself into this, but let's get into news with you. Um, we're celebrating a lot of USA teams today. Trust me, it is a lot. Starting off, congratulations to the girls U19 national team for bringing home the gold medal at the FIVB U19 World Championship. What a huge victory it was for them. Also, congratulations to the boys U19 national team who ended up in fourth place at the FIVB U19 World Championships. And this boys U19 team was a history-making team indeed. This is the furthest that any boys team has gone in the tournament. So big congratulations to that team and the girls team as well. Both teams, you guys played so well. Huge congratulations to you guys. And you guys played amazingly throughout the whole, whole tournament there too. And congratulations to the U.S. Women's National Team for winning bronze at the 2023 North Seca Pan American Cup. The U.S. Men's National Team ended up in fifth place overall at the 2023 North Seca Pan American Cup. Also, a big congratulations to Taryn Clove and Kristen Nuss for bringing home silver at the FIVB Elite 16 in Hamburg, Germany. Another congratulations is well indeed due to our former guest, Taylor Sander, and partner, Taylor Crabb, for winning the 2023 AVP Manhattan Beach Open this past weekend, as well as congratulations to former guest of the pod, Julia Scholes, and her partner, Betsy Flint, for also winning the 2023 Manhattan Beach Open. A lot of rain happening over the weekend, and, you know, California's going through it, but both teams definitely were able to squeeze it out and 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 get the gold medal there, too. So big congra congratulations to the four of them. Attention, athletes in the 2023-2024 USA Volleyball season. We will be launching memberships starting September 1st. Membership season is a go starting on the 1st of September. So for all of those who applies to, make sure you register for the season now. Get your chance to see the U.S. men's national team compete on home soil one more time. The U.S. men's national team will be competing in the North Seca Continental Championship from September 5th through the 10th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center in Charleston, West Virginia. Get your tickets right now. For more on all of the latest news, be sure to visit usavolleyball.org. Now, for today's show, we've got a great one, and I'm so, so sad I missed our interview 
because this person is also a cat person. And it's not a lot of those that come on the podcast here and there. But we sat down with Olympic gold medalist and U.S. Women's National Team setter, Micah Hancock. Micah gets down into some of her favorite memories from Tokyo, including getting the getting in the game, excuse me, when the starting setter went down. She also chats about um, her time spent playing overseas and in Italy and so much, much more. Um, this is such a great conversation. But yeah, enough for me. Here is Micah Hancock. Thank you so much, Micah. We appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with us. We're excited to have you on. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. I, I like to kind of kick things off with just kind of a fun, loose question here. What's something that USA volleyball fans might not know about you? Well, there's a lot behind the athlete, as we all know, but um, maybe that I love to dance. I think they probably know the cat mom at this point, but yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we'll, we'll get to the, the cat part too later. <laughs> Don't, so you like to dance any like particular like type of dancing like country line dancing or just you know, all dance i love dancing and that's kind of what led me to volleyball but um, i just love to groove i love to like i used to do like interpretive dance so it's just like i'm i'm a big i'm a big um i guess fan of anyone dancing the way they want and not being like judgmental because i feel like when you when you dance, everyone's like you're you're feeling like oh am I like being, am I self conscious of all day like what's the what's the vibe and it's like dude just do what feels right to you and so it's like just kind of like liberation through moving your body. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that about you. Uh, what I think you said volleyball led you or sorry dancing led you to volleyball. What do you mean by that specifically? So dance was my first love and I did it for like eight years of my life and. Uh, there was one point where I was doing both and I was just like tapped out and I was young. Right. But I was tapped out like energy levels wise. And I remember being in a dance class and I had just had volleyball and my dance teacher was like, if you went a hundred percent volleyball, like I need a hundred percent from here. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like I'm physically too tired. And so I had to choose. And, um, yeah, at that moment it was just like such a fun sport to me. I couldn't say no to it. So I chose volleyball. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, using kind of that background uh i know the the team has their like cheers their dances they do uh in the box uh i know i don't remember if i saw it this year but i know in the past you've had like warm-up dances too uh before like matches uh are you part of that choreography <laughs> at all when i left the girls well i think that happened like one year and it was when we had like a relatively young group and we were okay. just trying to let them you know kind of find what it is to be like in a professional setting, but also keep it loose, you know, so. Get comfortable in, in that setting. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I had no idea. I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> um, I, Kind of another fun one here. Do you have any rematch rituals or like superstitions? Uh, I know I, I've heard like, you know, don't wash your socks or knee pads, stuff like that. Like anything like that that, <laughs> that you yeah. have? No, I, I don't really. I think in college, um, playing for Russ Rose, like he was superstitious a little bit with certain routines, and it was um, like more of his thing. And I, I could appreciate it, right? Like I think now, like certain things he said to me, like how you start a match, like the first point of a match, like sets the tone, right? So like certain mindset stuff like that stuck with me. But as far as like having like a certain sports bra or, um. A certain type of underwear like people get really crazy with it like you said like not yeah they do and like <laughs> off clean like um but yeah i think i just like having a checklist packing really helps me keep keep my head but other than that i'm not like i need to do or have certain things you know i try to kind of in a sense like overcome that stuff if that makes sense like mindset of like if something goes wrong well, how do i deal with it you know so right Oh, we were just talking about your love and the, and kind of background in dance. Do you have like a you know favorite genre of music that you like to listen to to kind of like pump you up in the locker room or or like a go to snack that kind of just kind of gets you in that mood? Um, I think like a PBJ is like always something easy on my stomach before a match. Um, I don't have to have it. Obviously, a coffee would be ideal. Um, but yeah, songs 
I like something upbeat, but not super chaotic. Like I'm, I'm a big, I have a wide range of music that I, I love. So it's kind of the mood, the mood dependent, I think. What's the, what's the go-to coffee order for you? Um, right now it's like a grande ice brown shaken, um, or shaken espresso, like the brown sugar one, but I do oh, like yeah. the, less the syrup and all the things, but, um, I actually, I'm living, uh, on the beach this year and there's a place called two guns espresso and that's like, i love two guns yeah good. so i just learned about that this year and I'm is that to... man manhattan beach or they have other locations too yeah manhattan beach, uh, manhattan beach yeah that's a good one i, I, I like that coffee cool. shop yeah, yeah it's nice growing on me so <laughs> i'm a big coffee drinker as well i just decided i'm gonna try to kick the afternoon coffees uh take that out of my routine although i really love them I, I love a good iced coffee in the afternoon and with the baby coming i might need it so that might last that might not last that long <laughs> yeah it's hard because like i'm trying to actually do the same like at three i'm trying to cut caffeine off yeah so like good rest but it's also sometimes like you need it if you're really busy so yeah yeah just uh need, need a little pick me up to keep chugging along for sure for me, I just like like the taste too. Like I don't know if I really need it. I just I enjoy it. I like it. <laughs> Maybe that's an addiction. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, you know, we kind of talked a little bit when you just jumped on, but I I just saw you at BNL in Arlington, and obviously not the result, the end result that the team wanted, but um, I think a lot of good takeaways uh from that event and just the competition that you got to play against. Um, for you personally, maybe for the team, what have you guys been talking about? As far as just, you know, learning moments, takeaways from, from that experience. Yeah, I just think we're building, right? Um, after last quad and it being like a three-year quad. And so it's like a strange situation. But um, just noticing that we have some experience um, to gain. And we've got a lot to get better at. And I think the culture of our team is without question like a strong suit for us now. Um and I, I can say that we did a lot of work on that last pod, but now it's more so like fine tuning our technical and tactical stuff as a team. Um, so I think, like you said, it's like it was just a learning opportunity for us. And um, with some new players at BNL, like seeing how they how well they did and what we can do better as a group. And yeah, just be more prepared for the two more competitions we have of this year. Yeah, like you mentioned, def, uh, a lot of new players, younger players kind of coming in um, to this quad. Uh, for you, kind of what were your, um, I guess, uh, I guess reactions or just, you know, ob observations of, of seeing the younger group play and any anyone in particular kind of stick out to you as just being like, wow, I can't believe you're playing at this level this young. I mean, definitely Asia O'Neill. Yeah. I... Didn't set her a ton before we left. And I we just had a connection right off the bat, which is like not the easiest thing to do, but she was just like such a gamer. And, you know, after the first game, she was like, Mike, I was so nervous. She got subbed in. And I was like, I couldn't even tell, which is like it speaks to how like regulated she kept it. So just really impressed by um her maturity and like eagerness to learn and like follow as like someone who's climbing that ladder, right? Like you leave college and She's got another year of college and we're all getting the crap. That's they're crazy. Like, <laughs> like, Come join us. And she's like, I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, we're like, join the dark salt. But she's like, just very mature for her age. And like, I think her potential is out of this world. So I'm really excited for her. And I just think we had some outsides who maybe not, I'm not as surprised, but I'm like super stoked that they, they joined and um, just a lot of talent there. So I'm excited to see where where we go you mentioned uh asia and obviously not getting able to or not being able to set her a lot before getting to arlington uh kind of flipping that is there anyone that you just like love setting uh you just like love their you know their runs that they they do or anything like that well it's it's funny because i i want to say asia just because like it was such a surprise yeah and I was just like, I know I can, like, anywhere, I can just splinter the ball. And she's going to, like, if it's not a perfect set, she's jamming the ball in the middle of the floor. And, like, just finding different ways to score that maybe aren't as, like, common. Or, like, ways you think would be, like, 
good, but they're like a point. So it's just, um, I would honestly right now say her and we miss her right now. The gym, it's funny. Like we did like a middle block and turn. I'm like, oh yeah, like we're one short, like, <laughs> you know, but yeah, no, I mostly though, it's when I, and it can be like, it, it's situational and sometimes it depends on the day, but when I can see a hitter is like here with me, that is like what I most enjoy is like, give me the ball like today cat was like Micah let's go and I was like all right she's ready you know like so that is like where that's like what fires me up I think that's cool going back to just the BNL experience overall um what was your kind of take on it the for me um I had never been to a BNL finals I don't I don't believe there's ever been one in the U.S. um and seeing those crowds uh night in night out like was incredible i think the semifinal match was just electric too with the crowd and just how loud it was and um you, i mean it was in the us but you you couldn't tell like really kind of what you know who was the home favorite um or where you're playing just because of the international crowd that came out too and i think that just provided you know even more energy for for both squads so yeah could you speak to a little bit about just you know the fans that were that were there well, it's funny we all were joking like oh turkey brought like half the country here you know like they yeah up and i something that like american it's good for americans to see too but like oh we can actually go to other countries and watch our girls if like we really want to and that's obviously like that's a ticket and that's a lot of money and that's a flight and all the things but um it's just cool for america we were we were talking about that as a team like for america to see some like professional volleyball and um I just hope it happens more to be honest because we did have a good turnout and like you said like we didn't get the result we wanted but we learned a lot and i think for america to see like hey women's sports are showing up in all the countries like we could do more or like just be a little more consistent would be really cool yeah i hope it i hope it's not the last time you know we get crowds like that in in the u.s and Hopefully, you know, it inspired or, you know, motivated some of the, you know, younger athletes who were there watching just to, you know, maybe have seen volleyball on TV, college volleyball, professional volleyball, but to kind of be there, it's, it's a whole nother animal and a whole nother beast and a lot of fun. Uh, and hopefully that just kind of continues, uh, you know, generation to generation here in the future. Yeah. That's, that's another thing we were talking about is like, these young girls get to see like what it looks like, you know, because growing up, I never saw what it looked like. Like I saw Jordan Larson, like at a high performance tournament, but not like different countries, you know, it's just a different feel. So it's exciting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Looking ahead, there's a, a couple tournaments, I think coming up the Norseka women's continental. There's the Olympic qualifier as well uh, later in a couple months. Um, what's the, What's the energy around the squad? What are some of the goals that you guys are kind of talking about leading into those events? Yeah, I mean, not to get too detailed, but like we're just putting in a lot of work in a lot of different areas. And I think, like I kind of said earlier, like we're really working and have worked on the culture so much that we have the right people. And it's just how we puzzle them together, right? And how um, tactically we put it together and how technically we can get better individually and then like piece that together as a team, I think. We've got a lot of room for improvement and um, just exciting because I just feel like after being ill, everyone came back after our break and was super hungry to get those extra touches, like certain like situations. Hey, I need to get better at this and I want to rep it out. You know, I think we're seeing that hunger and um, it'll be exciting to have like this rest of this training block to c continue to do that and then compete. Um, obviously, two important, I mean, one big tournament, right? But like, also the the start of that would be to do well at Marseca. So yeah, definitely. Well excited to to watch those uh tournaments coming up. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um kind of wanna go back to your background a little bit too. We we you mentioned dance and how that led you into volleyball and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but would love to hear or maybe hear you expand a little bit more on your introduction to volleyball and maybe even specifically what those early days of volleyball were like for you. Wait. Yeah, early days of volleyball, I was following my mom around a co-ed gym and she would just play at this like school nearby our house and she was playing with um, like three or four sisters who were like Native American and just like loved the game, like super passionate. And we were like, 
my God, these girls, like their ball control. Like I didn't know much, but I knew like they look like they know what they're doing. Like they're controlling this ball and they're, they're right. putting, I was just automatically impressed. And I would just kind of like hit the ball against the wall. And then like gradually it was like me and my sister were playing with my mom. And then it was like, we would have my mom coach just early. So we would have our like club practices there in that same gym. So it just kind of came full circle there. And then um, high school came around. I was coached by the same man for high school and like some club. He was an Albanian national team player. So he had a lot of experience internationally already, which was great for me and my sister, actually. Um, I also learned a ton from her, just like watching her be like three years above me and just doing different things that I couldn't do yet, but I could see it in repetition almost like almost like how you visualize, right? Like now as a player, I could see my sister doing these things that like I'll once be able to do. And it, um, it got me in the gym a ton. I think that was just like, I was around it so much and yeah, I played high school and then it was club, which I played like a six two my entire career. And so getting to college then was like, oh, you're a five one setter. Like you're touching the ball a lot more. You're not just like hitting balls and like, um, you're not like the score anymore. You know, it's like, how do I get my team in like the best positions to score? So that was like a mindset shift. And um, yeah, I competed at the college level. But I think like the one thing that I really to like ingrain in like young players is the basics are so important and i know it's fun to like hit balls and like do the flashy thing but like passing balls for me even is like i was just getting reps and obviously at that time i was passing but passing getting up against the wall and just getting like the contact routinely off the wall like on the bounce off the wall and like making good contact and like wrist away and then like you know i i think that those are things that I did because I was alone with the ball, but like that time alone with the ball really helps you be confident when you like step on a team. Um, and so I, I just think that that's one thing America does differently than Europe is there's so much volleyball school in Europe and America like think it's getting better, but we, we develop a lot of one dimensional players and um, very talented ones, but like we need to have all the skills, right? Cause that's what makes a great player is if you're not good at one thing, one game, you have three other, four other categories you can help the team out in. So it just kind of broadens your, your, your value, I think. Yeah. As a, as a middle, you might be, maybe it only happened once a match, right. you know, or once a tournament, but you might, that ball might come to you. That second ball might come to you to, to set and you got to be ready for that. I think we, I think it was Cassie Lickman. Yeah. It was Cassie that we, we talked to a few few episodes back and she talked a lot about being what you're exactly what you're saying being an all-around player at least having those skills yeah. all the way around and that was big in her career because she um set she played every position i think she was came in or recruited as a setter in college and ended up playing outside and did a little opposite uh and outside with the national team um passing too came in as a passer but yeah it's uh, it's very important, and I think it's it's it might be it might not not every club might be doing it, but I think it's important, especially like you said, at, at an early age to to try all those positions or you know get those reps at every position to right. to I think that'll only prolong your career at those top levels as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Man, I just I, I like lost where we were at. We were talking about <laughs> got so deep into that. Yeah, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Talking about your background, of course. Oh, uh, you mentioned your coach, uh, who um, Edgar. Ed, Ed is that right? Um, Mar Maraku is that uh, Maraku? Yeah. And he also, I believe, early on, uh, coached the men's sitting team, um, U.S. men's sitting team, and, and helped out with that. And I think is still at UCO. Yeah. Um, right which is also the sitting training center as well. U S sitting uh, national team training center. Um, yeah. the, and I, I thought when you were, when you were saying coach, I, I thought you were going to say Bill Hammeter. I could have sworn you played for Bill Hammeter, but was it the club that he was the director of? Um, I or... played my 14th year. Okay. And yeah, that man taught me a lot about patience in the game, but yeah, it's, I think it's just so funny that, like 
where I'm from is where the like Paralympic team is. It's pretty cool because I get to see like how they train. Like it's like literally, well, my parents just moved, but when I was living there, it was like a five minute drive from my house. So I would go by and like play around and my wrist would be like broken by the end of the training because it, <laughs> it's really like that, you know, but um, yeah, Bill actually, uh, great coach. He coached me and I, not a lot of people know that I was kind of a diva when I was younger and like I wanted every ball and I was like, why can't we do this? You know, but I was used to playing with older girls. So he taught me like, like you gotta, you gotta lead, you gotta be patient. Like you've gotta be helping where you can versus like pointing out the things you got to get solutions. Right. So I think he was a, it was a very integral part of like the player that I am today as well. Like we had, I got lucky in Oklahoma because I had some really good coaches growing up. I love that. That's just, I mean, that shows it right there, how small the volleyball world and community is. That's so cool that you have that tie. That's awesome. Um, Yeah. Kind of going you know, into your club years, do you have any favorite moments? I know you won bronze at uh, GJNC Girls Junior Nationals in 09, but um, yeah, any like fun memories from from playing club or or even just, um, you know, your youth volleyball days? I just think, um, yeah, I think that probably would have been one of our best moments as a team. I just remember like, living in that like club world and like loving competing no matter who we were playing and we were like for a while it was like we were trying to figure out how to win right like and then it would be like we were to the point where we were scouting people and our coaches weren't telling us to scout we were just like oh that's the girl from like colorado who hits crop no like we were just like building our living that's like, cool <laughs> this is like what it's about you know and um our our pool like in Oklahoma is much smaller, right? Like then you see a Texas or California, like, um, but we did quite a bit with what we had. And I just think, um, yeah, it was just really fun. Like that's why I chose volleyball because I just like loved competing so much. And it just exposed me to a world like seeing wave like at nationals and stuff. I'm like, who are these girls? Like all these girls are hitting like that one girl from Colorado. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like the talent was just like, whoa, like, and it was cool for me to see that because it, it just humbles you and makes you say, okay, like if I'm going to master this skill, like there are other people trying it too, you know? So it just, it puts you in like, and every day you got to earn it kind of thing, the mindset. I love that y'all were scouting and, you know, during your free time, uh, not playing. That's awesome. And like, probably those players or, you know, at least their faces kind of stuck in your brain and maybe saw them later on in your career in college or yeah were there any is there anyone like that that you remember that maybe you were a team like became a teammate later at Penn State or or played a lot against in college so I had a teammate Iona Whitney in college who we we were at like a USA um camp together and we hit it off your we roommates and yeah she became my teammate at Penn State and back when like I didn't know what can say like I didn't know the legends I didn't know anything about it I actually like my story is kind of weird with that I don't know if you guys know that but I'm supposed to go to Tulsa University coach left there was a whole thing with like the NIL like the letter attend, you know and I was like okay can I go check out the other colleges whatever there were not a lot of scholarships out and Penn State was the only school that had a setter like position that needed to be filled oh wow on. that's like what are the odds right so I go on like a spring break. It was super late. I go on an official visit and I'm like scrimmaging with these girls and I'm like, holy cow, like the amount of talent in this gym right now. And then I like see Ayana freshman year summer and I'm like, no way, dude. you know, like I like thrown in there like, well, you're coming here, you know. Um, but yeah, what was her name? I can't remember her, her last name, but her name was Morgan. She played for Front Range and she was like the Colorado hitter I was talking about. And she oh, okay. Played. Um, and she ended up playing outside a little bit for them and also libero. She was just like good at all the skills, you know, and um, yeah, it's just funny because those things, they don't leave you, you know, like we talk about that in the USA gym, like you build your encyclopedia, like every day we're competing against the same girls. If there's something they're doing and we're not stopping it, like we know what they like to do. So let's do be better at that, make them do something different. So yeah, it just started pretty young for me, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, worked out pretty well for you at Penn State. Yeah. Uh, 
part of that dom those dominant years um you know i think it was er maybe mid early 2000s 07 to 10 maybe the the one back to back championships and then of course your years uh winning back to back championships as well what was it like being a part of you know such a prestigious program like penn state well it's funny cuz when you're in it you don't really you don't really think that right cuz you're working so hard and there's no like off switch um but yeah looking back it's like I'm super proud of what we did and um, I think how we did it. I think uh, we had some culture stuff to overcome as well. Like there's a lot of ego, right? You have a lot of really good players and it's like, how do you put a dream team together and make it work? Sometimes it's actually harder. Um, and we just had some really good talent coming back my freshman year. And it was like, okay, how do we, how do we figure this out as a team? And we figured that out my junior year and then senior year, we could roll over with some of the talent we had, right? We had a big graduating class that uh, my junior year, but we had Ali and Haley join us my senior year and they were just like offensively insane. Like we were just figuring it out and yeah, it was a, it was a blast. I think that's the hard part is it's hard to go through it when you're like in the dirt and you're like, earning your wins, which winning, everyone loves to win, right? But like the sacrifices we made to do that were a lot, but they were worth it. So looking back now, it's just like, I have a lot of, um, a lot of really good feelings about what we did and how, yeah, how we did it together. What's it like playing, you mentioned Haley, what's it like playing with Haley from college versus now at the national team? Is she, you know, the same? Has she changed any different, like differently at all? Yeah, I think as a young pup, she was just like out there and like very bubbly and like she's like, I'm going to go hit the ball, you know, and now she's like really like funneling her intelligence and like how to be tactical and like there's a lot of feedback and direction, which obviously like I knew like I I knew her as a freshman in college. So like she's had a lot of time to do that, but um, just super impressed with like the level of engagement she could have now and before it was kind of like i would just throw on her slides back there and she was just like so high that you know it's just it's also just a different um level of play obviously that we're at now but i think you have to do that to get those percentages so i'm happy that we're still playing together that's nuts like when we we had one I remember what game it was me ali and Haley in the front row and i was like you know <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it still sticks with y'all. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. Um, kind of moving on you know, throughout your career, obviously. Yeah. Congratulations on winning the Olympic gold medal. Has that feeling like set in for you at all? Like, are you used to hearing Micah Hancock, Olympic gold medalist a at all? Um, it's weird. I go through like moments of like, yeah, that definitely happened. And like, I can think about the experience and, but also like the, the surrealness of like what we did and the timing in which it happened. It was such a weird year for a lot of people in the world, you know? And like, I think we just capitalized on the fact that like, Hey, it's going to be who can like get through the mud the best, you know? And I just think we really took like that extra year to dive into what, what else we need to win and we did that and i think too if there's like the back end of it right like we won how do you handle that like what's your new intention with volleyball right like is it to recenter yourself and like hey i'm i'm still going for mastery right like that's what it is or if it's like some people it's money right it's it's a job there's so many different paths you could take and for a lot of i think us it was just like we didn't realize the emotional side of like, after you win, what do you do with that? You know, emotionally, like what's driving you? So I think it was also a moment for us to sit in like, yeah, we were good enough. And now like the next year it starts all over again. You know what I mean? So right. super, super like, I think just obviously one of the most special moments I'll think I'll ever have in my life, but also just so much learning can come from that. So I'm, honestly just honored yeah of course one of the big storylines early on in the games was jordan poulter goes down with the injury you come in to step in obviously you've set in big moments before that but it's you know a whole nother stage it's the olympic games was there any extra 
pressure for you that you were feeling or what were kind of, you know, what were you thinking going, coming into that moment? Sure. I think it definitely was like a, okay. Like, and I'm very uh, like emotionally connected to my teammates. So part of it is like weathering the storm of like your teammate just went down. Right. And then what do I need to do? Like okay, back against the wall. If it's just, if it's just me, like our odds in like a, a five setter, like, you know, if it's three out of whatever, like we're going to get it done. And so it was just kind of like compartmentalizing, like she's going to be okay. I have to do this now, you know? And um, I think the team did a really good job of like, we're, we're doing it. Like you're here, you're on the court and we're going to do it. And I think, I mean, I'll always preach team over everything, but that was one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had in my life. Just being like, okay, this isn't like our first choice. Like this was an ideal a starter gets injured. But the fact that we also had two starters get injured here yeah. and one of a metal, I, it's just like that. It just, it just preaches team. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of like, okay, like my hands are frozen rocks, but let's figure it out. So, um, yeah, like I said, the team did a great job. And like, I was just like, Hey, you just gotta go just got to go because it's what you play for, you know? Yeah. I think that's like you're saying right now, a testament to the team and the culture. And we've had card Sean, we've talked to Aaron virtue, you know, your teammates from that moment. And they've talked about the 23 strong uh, and just instilling that culture early on uh, for that quad, I think was huge and probably, you know, a huge impact and helped you in that moment as well. Um, just knowing your team is behind you, got your back, you know, no matter who's on the court, you know, exactly. That's awesome. What, you know, in that moment, that final ball comes down, Jordan Larson, put that final ball down in that moment, you know, is it still a blur for you? Have you been able to piece it all together? Like, what were you feeling? What were you saying to your teammates, your coaches in that, in that incredible moment? I remember her, like I knew once, the ball was set to the go because she had been hitting like she was cracking balls against me. Yeah. Who wants it, you know? And I remember I was like one of the last ones out because I was like in shock, like, and not like, oh my God, we did it. What? It was like, we did it. Like, we did it. We did it. What we did what we said and like looked at each other in the eyes that we were going to do this last year. And we like just kept reading like life into that. And I remember like running out and just being like, I can't wait to get my hands on these girls, you know, and just like look at them and be like, we, we are good enough right now. And let's fucking relish in it, you know, excuse me, but, but we could sit in it and like, just be like, yeah, like we figured it out, you know? And I just think the photos, I, we were all just stunned. I don't know if everyone, like, I don't know if anyone posted right after the fact we were all just like, we're just going to chill because we we deserve that for a second, you know, and um, yeah, I do remember, though, like being stopped and then like running. I'm like, oh, my God, everyone's running out there, you know, like I'm behind. <laughs> but what a great moment. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I can't even can't even imagine what that feels like. But uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's that's awesome. What uh, obviously, you know, a very unique Olympic games with COVID and no fans being there, your family can't be there. Um, what are you kind of looking for? Obviously the roster is not announced yet, but if you're selected for the next Olympic games, what are you kind of looking forward to uh, in that experience? You know, it's going to be kind of, you know, back to normal. There's going to be fans, uh, but anything that you're like, just really looking forward to getting that full Olympic experience for yeah, I think just like experiencing like the village at its normal state and not having to like swab and um, like hands off. We were just literally doing everything we had to do to not get COVID. And so I can't wait to like explore Paris a little bit. Like if I get to go, I want my family there. Um, oh, I think we lost her. Got you back. <laughs> Emily just called me and I spazzed. So. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, 
Right. Back. We'll pick it up right there. That was, I was, I feel like that was going to be really good. So let's yeah. keep going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Having your, you're looking forward to having or exploring Paris, have your family there. Yeah. Yeah. Fans, I think like serving at the Olympic games and like seeing just empty seats was like, I haven't ever done this, you know? And so it was just like, there's the fuel you get from the crowd. And I think it would have just been a lot of fun. It would have been like, completely different experience for us if we had had that in Tokyo and there's just like a fire that it brings and sure maybe some nerves but also like so much so much more fun and like just you're just showing what you've been working on so I think that's another just another aspect that would be it would make it more like a real experience for me at least yeah definitely want to get back to normal but also still kind of cool to to say you're at that Olympic Games, you know, not only at Olympic Games, but such a unique Olympic Games too, uh, in those circumstances. I know, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, be looking forward to not having to poke my nose every morning. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, kind of cool to, to say you're there too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, kind of moving over into your professional side, you you played overseas, I think since you've graduated or since you graduated Penn State. Um, what are some of the like, I guess, favorite spots you've been able to um, to play in in the uh, favorite countries that you've got to play in? Um, well, this will be my seventh year in Italy. So I think it's safe to say Italy's, you know, done me right. I uh, really enjoy the culture um, and the volleyball. The volleyball has taught me a lot, um, like on and off the court. I had a couple of years in Poland and... I think for that experience, it was like, wow, these fans really show out for their players. And I just really enjoyed that after like being at a decent college, right? And like not maybe expecting that from overseas, but being like, whoa, these people like really love their teams and their players. And I think Poland too was maybe the first time I saw like a mom bring her child onto the court. And I was just like, whoa, like at some point I would like to do that. You know, like you see that in the NBA, but you like, the amount of freedom I think that's within women's sports is maybe different. I'm not really sure if that's on us or them, but you know, it's more of like a do it and then ask later. Right. Or like apologize. Yeah. But um, it was just a really cool moment for me to see like families um, incorporated into like a professional life. So um, yeah, I think one of my other experiences it's still Italy, but it was right out of college and I was just like, a, it was like a little bean. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew there was like, I had just gotten like national player of the year, felt pretty good, but like knew what was going to be different and like um, got to a moco and was like really humbled, you know, in like the best way, right? Like I saw how much talent there was overseas and these are like real women and I'm like, okay, I've got a lot of like work to do. And um, so I think that was like my wake up call to like, this is like kind of like starting as a freshman again and not getting um, overwhelmed with that, but just like super ready for a new challenge. And I think as I've aged, I learned that like the changes that life brings you are most likely because you're ready for them. So yeah, super, super stoked to have had the path I've had. Any, uh, as you mentioned that, it just came into my head to ask like any advice that you would have for you know a college player who just graduated who's looking to and then even now it's changed from when you came out because you got u.s professional leagues coming out too but any advice for you know how an athlete coming out of college can best prepare for for that moment that transition yeah i think it's just to like have grace with yourself and know that it is like another ladder you have to climb and you're not going to be perfect from the get-go and i think a lot of us elite athletes are just that like we want to be like elite no matter where we are and what conditions they are and there are no excuses for perfectionists but it's like it, you can still work really hard and not be good enough yet you know and um so I think it's just yeah being patient with yourself and putting in the work you know and like not making excuses and being coachable but um yeah keeping your head down and just doing the work and the process of it will pay off What's your favorite part about playing overseas? Is it the food, you know, experiencing the cultures, kind of all the above? Or yeah, what are your favorite parts? Booty. I love to like put on a cute outfit and go get like coffee or like dinner with my teammates. Especially I meet up with my Americans a lot over there. And um, yeah, I like to explore new spots. I'll be more in New Milan 
as I've been like the last five years. Um, but last year I was on the coast and it was just further away from like most of my friends, which is, which is totally fine because it actually helped me make deeper connections with Italians and other foreigners. But um, yeah, I just, I love to travel when I have time and see my people. I think it can be isolating over there too. I think that would be another form of advice I have is like connect with your people that you need to when you're overseas and um, journal. I think journaling helps so much because then you can see like where your mindset is and like, you know, that if it gets to a dark place, like you can reach out to people. I think like I always joke like we stick together like Americans stick together because when I see a young American I go say hi because I remember being the young American and being like what do I do like do I say hi and I'm like wanting to chat with people you know so I think that would be another thing it's just connecting yeah that's cool that you know they might be on your they might not be playing for your club your American teammates but um they might be in Italy they might be somewhere else in Europe but it's so easy to travel over there and kind of meet up on your off days. And yeah, that's cool that you're able to still experience that. I know I see it on social media every now and then. I, I just think that's one of the coolest parts to be able to, for you guys, I, I would imagine just to be able to connect and stay connected uh, and, you know, just grab a coffee somewhere, or go to dinner. Yeah. I've, I've made some of my best memories and like, obviously my adult life has been mostly spent overseas. So like, I think for a while it was like, well, I can't do that because I have a job. And it's like, well, you can also go have one drink at dinner. You know, you can have a balanced life and see your friends. And I think that it's just pretty cool to look back and be like, wow, I spent a lot of time in Italy. You know what I mean? And have like seen Portugal and Barcelona and all these places because I had maybe two days off. And I said, hey, I'm going to go do this instead of sit at home for two days. And um, yeah, I'm super grateful for that. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I love hearing about the, uh, the professional international experience because something that, you know, for me, for fans in the U.S. don't really get to see a, a ton uh, and really, you know, see the behind the scenes, too. I think that's really cool. Uh, we, I, I promised I would ask you about your cats, so I want to kind of get to that, too, before I let you go. Uh, are you a cats over dogs person or, or where, where are you at on that stance? <laughs> well, it's been- I I don't feel like I'm the cat's over dogs person, but then like I think about certain things that dogs do and I'm like, oh, I don't love it. You know, like they drool. They are they are sweet animals. I'm an animal person in general, but I think especially for now in the state, I'm like I'm traveling a lot. I feel like I could still give Klaus like a great home and like take care of him. But like even this summer, I traveled a ton and I had like friends coming by twice a day, like cuddle him feed him you know like do all the things <laughs> right next to me right now just hanging out but yeah i think i love dogs too i just i couldn't take care of one at this stage in my life so i i feel like they are a little bit needier than than yes. a cat typically I, I think there are some very social cats who need attention but yeah. i think typically dogs are the more needier ones <laughs> he they're kind of like i'll I wish he was more needy, you know, but then yeah. he's loving. He'll come over to me and like just lay on my neck for 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, are you good now? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Bye. So <laughs> yeah, it's a different need, I feel like. And you you have a cat. I think I heard Klaus. Is that right? Klaus? How'd you come up with that name? Um, So I was in the midst of like deciding if I wanted to go get him. Yeah, I had to wait two months. I actually got him off a farm in Italy. So he's Italian. He's got a passport and all the whole thing. <laughs> so, but I was watching Umbrella Academy and yeah, I've seen it. I haven't seen the latest season. I've been saving that. Uh, oh. It'll probably be part of my uh, paternal leave. <laughs> yeah. Benches. Right. Um, so he named Faust number four. Because oh, yes. Okay. So when he was a kitten, he had this like very chaotic energy. And I just thought it fit so well. And now it's like aged perfectly because he's a little more calm and it's almost like German. So I don't know. It just it really fits him. So I love that. That makes total sense uh, why you chose that name. <laughs> That's cool. Do you have like a? Um, I feel like pet owners make up voices for their pets. Do you have like an Italian voice that you have for Klaus or a German voice you have for Klaus? Not listening to me though. I'll start speaking some Italian to him. I'm like, "Hey, qua," and then he's like, "What?" He's like, <laughs> like, "I speak English," but. 
Um, no, I always just talk to him like a child. Like that's just unavoidable as a cat parent. I love that. That's cool. Yeah, we have a lot of um, actually. Uh, Lara on this call has a cat. Our Clarence, my co-host, also has a cat. He's not here, uh, but he's gonna be sad that he missed this conversation. Uh, but their cats love to get up on the camera uh, during our team's calls, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, they want to they want to be on top of it. And I'm like, you can't do that. It's like when you can't give them attention, they want the most attention. <laughs> like, how do we cause problems? Yes, I'll do that. Right. <laughs> I love that. Micah, thank you so much. This has been so great talking to you and getting to know a little bit more about you. Is there anything that we left on the table or anything that you'd like to share before we let you go here? No, I think um, I think we had a good little, a little podcast episode. I loved it. Yeah, it came together. This is great. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, and, and we'll, be, uh, we'll be paying attention to the competitions coming up and good luck in uh, upcoming season in the U.S. And of course... Um, overseas as well. Thank you so much, Steven. Thank you. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye. As I mentioned before, I'm so sad I missed the interview because, I mean, cats, right? They're so cool. And it's so, I, while I was kind of listening to the interview, uh, you know, getting caught up because, you know, I, I did miss it. Um, I do love the reason that Micah has a cat. You know, she's got a crazy travel schedule. You know, that's point in life. It's like super crazy. And uh, that's actually a reason why I tell a lot of the people that I know that's the reason I have a cat myself. It doesn't, it's not because I don't like dogs or any other animal. It's because, you know, cats are very, you know, self maintainable, if that's a word, whatever, using it right now. But I mean, you know, on those long road trips and then, uh, you know, in her sense, you know, she's got a lot of international travel going on and just, you know, much, much, much busier life there too. It doesn't make sense. So uh, proud cat people over here. Shout out to the cat people in the world. But in addition to that, um, I do really like what Micah said about dancing and, you know, how that led to her involvement in volleyball and how ultimately, unfortunately, she had to, you know, pick between, you know, dance or, you know, volleyball. You know, I think oh, I think she made a great decision, you know, give or take. But I mean, um, really like the fact that she also mentions that, like, She's a big, big advocate for those who, you know, dance without thinking or no strings attached or just move how you feel. If you, you know, dance to the rhythm or dance to the lyrics, you know, who cares? Just make sure you're having a good time because it's a it's a good, you know, point of, I guess, expression, stress relief, you know, all the above, too. You know, I know for all those, you know, me and, you know, we go out to our favorite areas on the first on a dance floor. And it's it really warms my heart to see everybody else out there as well, too. So big advocate for dancing. But, you know, I think that can be a whole episode separately. If we talk to all of our future guests about dancing alone and how they do about and how they do about it, how they go about all the other stuff. Um, I think that'd be a pretty interesting episode moving forward. But <clears throat> enough about that. Big thank you again to Micah for coming on the show. We know you're very, very busy and getting ready um, to qualify or uh, to compete to qualify for some Olympic matches coming up. So we appreciate you taking the time to chat with Steven. Um, also, what a little treat to also have Steven come out of paternity leave um, just to record um, the interview there, too. So, um, <clears throat> you know, just for the record, Steven did record um, that interview um, before he went on leave. And then, you know, was able to kind of handle that there, too. But now, yeah, he's officially off and on uh, paternity leave. And we'll be following along his journey on social media while there, too. But speaking of following along, uh, you guys can also follow along with the U.S. women's national team as they prepare to qualify for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. You can follow Micah on Instagram at Micah Hancock. And you can follow the women's national team at USAVWNT. It was nice knowing uh, that we were chatting with a cat fan. Like I mentioned, PK, my cat would be so proud. He would have been all over the keyboard and all over the interview just to be nosy like cats do. But again, thank you so much, Micah. Now, on to our upcoming events. First up, we got the FIVB U21 Women's World Championship from August, almost in October, excuse me, August 17th through the 26th in Leon in Aguas Calientes, Mexico. 
which is going on now. And it's probably the second day of full play. Um, and they're now two and one after the first full two. So basically, basically, make sure you tune in and follow along that journey there too. We also had the North Seca Women's Pan American Cup final six, August 19th through the 27th in the Dominican Republic. It is also going on right now. On to the beach tour event side of volleyball. USA Volleyball Beach Tour Old Dominion Tidewater National Qualifier in Virginia Beach, Virginia is August 26th through the 27th. Next up, we have the GCVA September BRQ in League City, Texas from, not from, on September 2nd. So a lot of beach qualifiers coming up um, this coming season as well, too. So be on the lookout for those. Now, I know we're all very well off, but it is also indoor junior registration season, which is also its own monopoly of events. But we had the 2023 Mountain Classic Boys Qualifier registration already opened right now. Registration opened up on August 9th. And we have about, I want to say, just over 50 teams signed up for that tournament as well up in the Denver Convention Center. It's going to be a fun one. So make sure if you have a boys club team, you're interested in a really, 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 really great competition, be sure to register for the Mountain Classic Qualifier um, in the beginning of December. Registration is now open. Next up, we have the 2024 Salt Lake City Showdown 18th Qualifier. That registration opens up on September 13th. Next up, we have the 2024 Sunshine Classic Qualifier in Orlando, Florida. Weekend 1 registration opens up on October 4th. Weekend 2 registration then opens up and follows that on October 11th. Next up after that, we will have the 2024 ASICS Show Me Qualifier with registration for Weekend 1 opening up on October 12th. And then Weekend 2 registration will open up on October 19th. Lastly, in our junior registration season Palooza, we have the 2024 Salt Lake City Showdown Qualifier registration that opens up on October 18th for Weekend 1 and then October 25th for Weekend Number 2. Good luck to everyone competing and shout out to all of the USA Volleyball regions for setting up and hosting these events. It takes a village and sometimes you have a village of two people, village of one, a village of three. It really depends on the manpower there. And... It's not easy. So big shout out to you guys there. More details to come in all upcoming events can also be found at usavolleyball.org. Now, moving on to the pro side of things. First up, we have the Beach Pro Tour Futures Faden in Austria uh, on August 23rd through the 27th. Next up, we also have the Beach Pro Tour Futures Egypt August 23rd through the 27th. Overlapping days on a lot of these as well, too. So make sure you are tuning in and staying up to date on each event in whatever location they are in as well, too. Next up after that, we have the Beach Pro Tour Futures Brno in Czech Republic from August 24th through the 27th. Next up after that, another Beach Tour event, Beach Pro Tour Futures in Seoul, Korea from August 24th through the 27th. Again, a lot of overlapping dates there, too. Be sure to tune in for every single one. You do not want to miss this. Um, next up, we have the North Seca Women's Continental Championship in Canada from August 27th through September 4th. Next up after that, we have the Beach Pro Tour Futures Montpellier Men's in France from August 30th through September 3rd. Beach Pro Tour Futures Warsaw in Poland August 31st through September 3rd. Another beach tour event following that, uh, we have the men's future Corigliano Rosano in Italy, August 31st through September 3rd. Next up after that, we have the North Seca Beach Trinidad in Maracas Bay, Trinidad, September 2nd. Lastly, we have the North Seca Men's Continental Championship at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center in Charleston, West Virginia from September 5th through the 10th. Be sure to get your tickets. Right now, again, like I said above, and news with Hughes, an opportunity to see the men's national team on home soil once again. So that's it for the pro side of things. And just remember, listeners, you can rate, review, and share this podcast with your friends, families, teammates, pet cats, pet dogs, pet rabbits, whatever you want to do, whatever animal you own, be sure to share this podcast. It really helps podcasts grow and reach new listeners. And 
check out our video episodes on our website and on YouTube. Uh, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of your continued support. It has been an amazing journey from the start of this podcast all the way up until now. We're very thankful for it. Very thankful for you as friends of the pod as well. If you know a club that should be featured or a story that you would like us to share, you can email us at the USAV show at USAV.org. Be sure to leave us feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know about any future topics you want us to hear about. Um, we will definitely take that into consideration and into uh, account too. We're trying to hit 100 episodes before the end of the year too. The more content, the better for sure. But remember, new episodes drop every other week. And until then, Thank you all for listening to episode number 72 of the USA Volleyball Show. We are the official podcast of USA Volleyball. This has been the USA Volleyball Show with Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson. Produced by Curtis Ward. Our content producer is Lara Fawcett. Our marketing lead is Bree J. Cox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.